What's up everybody, Peter Valley here. Listen, this video is way overdue. I'm gonna cover two things in this video. Number one, how to find the cheapest copy of any book anywhere on the internet. In that part, I can wrap up in probably 30 seconds. Then I'm gonna cover how to avoid all the pitfalls that are associated with buying cheap books on sites other than Amazon because sites that are not Amazon get kind of a bad rap, but they're, the mistakes are really, really easy to avoid. So I'm gonna walk you through how to avoid all the pitfalls. I've made them all, I've heard all the horror stories. I'm gonna give you a complete blueprint from purchasing the cheapest copy of any book on the internet while avoiding all the major pitfalls associated with doing so. Okay, so there are two sides to profiting off a book when it comes to online book arbitrage. Now. This is the one most people focus on, selling high. I wanna buy a book and sell it for really high, right? This is where most people put all of their focus, but guess what? It is equally profitable to buy a book low. If you sell a book $10 higher than you otherwise would, you're making 10 extra dollars, but guess what? You make the same extra $10 if you buy a book $10 cheaper than what you normally would. And that, number two here, that is what we're gonna cover in this video, how to find the cheapest copy of any book anywhere on the internet. Now, there's some myths, you guys. Myth number one is that Amazon is the only site to source books when, you're coming, when it comes to online book arbitrage. Most people, and I mean like, I don't know, like 80 plus percent based on my students, it seems like no matter how many times I say this, seem to focus exclusively on purchasing books from Amazon because it's the easiest, right? It's easy just to look at Amazon and not look through 40 other sites. But guess what? There's a shortcut and I'll get to that in a second. Myth number two is that all non-Amazon sites are scams. And you guys, it's true. There's, there's some, that's what we're gonna get to in the second part of this video. A lot of pitfalls that are associated with buying on sites other than Amazon. And you hear a lot of chatter in the groups and stuff from people who have been burned by purchasing from sites other than Amazon. And they tell people, hey, don't do it, it's scary, you'll get ripped off, blah, 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 right? Whether it's eBay or all these other sites that are out there. And the answer is, and the, and the reality is that that is true, but only if you don't know what you're doing. So by the end of this video, you are gonna know what you're doing so you can with confidence purchase from non-Amazon sites. And here's a fact. There are over 30, actually over 40, other book selling sites other than Amazon that have millions and millions of books for sale. What do you think the odds are at any given moment that Amazon is the cheapest copy across 40 other sites? What do you think the odds are? I think honestly, it's it's actually more than half the time. I'd say probably 60% of the time, Amazon is in fact the cheapest. But guess what? 40% of the time, and I'm totally making that number up. I, that's just based on my personal estimate. Somewhere in range of 40% of the time, Amazon is not the cheapest copy on the internet and you're actually losing money, like literally leaving money on the table by only focusing on Amazon, okay? And as a quick side note, um, with Zen Arbitrage, we do scan over 40 other book selling sites. Other tools, they just give you one. Only Amazon, right? We scan over 40 with no clicking required. I'll show you that in a second. It's actually really, you literally just hover over any single book in Zen Arbitrage and you, we scan instantly, no clicking required, over 40 other sites and show you the cheapest copy anywhere on the internet. Okay, so back to our scheduled program. Fact number two, even though buying on non-Amazon sites can be kind of scary, and they won't be by the end of this video, but it's very easy to avoid pitfalls. Okay, and that's what we're gonna cover here. So part one, let's just get this out of the way. Why is this so important? Why is sourcing off sites other than Amazon when you're sourcing books online, why is this so crucial to your success and your profits? Look at it this way. If you wanna increase your profits, this is kinda of what I said a second ago, buy 10, on every book by $10, you got two options, sell for $10 higher or buy it for $10 lower, right? The net result is exactly the same, yet everyone focuses on number one. Now here's what I'm gonna call the great truth with a capital G, capital T. Anyone who's making serious money from online book arbitrage is putting a lot of their focus on purchasing underpriced books. And by that, I mean books that either temporarily underpriced on Amazon, we got a tool called Price Hack that shows you underpriced books on Amazon, or by purchasing on third-party sites, meaning books that are underpriced relative to Amazon's price on sites other than Amazon. So that's what we're gonna cover. Now, before I made this video, I went, because I wanna find an example for you. This wasn't the first book I looked up, but it was like, the second or third. In other words, I found an example, a, a shining example of how powerful third-party sites are in like under five minutes, okay? So I found this book, Molecular Biology of, of the Cell, sixth edition on Amazon at this moment, $129.95. That is the cheapest copy, period. I ran it through a site that I'll reveal to you here in a second, 
and I found this, it just ran the ISBN through. The cheapest copy on eBay is $71.99. That is something like a 55% or wait, 45% <laughs> discount or something like that. Um, over for the, I think I got the numbers wrong. I think it's like 45. Anyway, the point is, forget the text here. It's almost $60 less. Now, yes, it is true. Once I dug into this a little bit more, this book is heavily beaten up, but is absolutely readable. You'd probably list it on Amazon in acceptable condition. But um, it's totally sellable. Books in acceptable condition absolutely sell. And you were getting this book for six, almost $60 below what you would have paid on Amazon. And I'm going to tell you how to do that with just one extra click in your online sourcing process. Okay, so this is an example of, again, you're literally putting more than $50 extra in your pocket by having looked at a third-party site on this one book alone. Okay, so this is the power of sourcing on sites other than Amazon. Now let's get into what you probably want to get into is, all right, Peter Valley, how do we do this? Just give me the site. Where do I go? Okay, let's do that. How to find the cheapest copy of any book on the internet, period. Now, there are a bunch of sites that aggregate book prices. There's a bunch. You don't even, don't even bother writing these down because I'm going to tell you the best one here in a second. Whoops, I kind of spoiled it there. <laughs> there's Book Finder, there's Book Words, there's Add All, there's Books Price, there's Book Scouter. All right, and you're just like, all right, which one do I choose? I'm going to make this easy for you. Bookfinder.com. That's it. Go to bookfinder.com. It is the ugliest of, <laughs> of all the sites, but that should be a clue. It's actually the best. They say if you want a surgeon and you don't know what surgeon to get, you want the surgeon that doesn't look like a surgeon because it means he got to his position through sheer skill, not through just gliding past everybody under the radar as a bad surgeon because he looked professional. Does that make sense? Probably not. Anyway, <laughs> the point is... Bookfinder is ugly, man. It's a lot of the other ones are really slick. Don't be fooled. Now, it's not that any of the other aggregating sites are bad. Bookfinder, it just it, it just stood the test of time. It's been around forever. And the one thing I like about it that most other sites don't have is it scans eBay. eBay's huge, right? Most, I'm not gonna say all, but most of the other book price aggregator sites don't include eBay. And that is a massive, massive omission, right? Any site you're going to use has to use eBay. Most of the ones that do have eBay pretty much scan the same sites. I just like Bookfinder best, okay? I'll make this easy for, me, for you. It looks like this. You run an ISBN through or a title and it just, it just goes through, it scans all the sites that they're partnered with and gives you, it just ranks it from lowest price to highest price. Super, super simple, super easy to use. And as, a, as another side note, in Zen Arbitrage, you just simply hover over any book. This is a, this is a screenshot from Zen Arbitrage and you get a live pop-up, live pop-up. And we scan every site on book that Bookfinder scans. We just give you a little pop up of Bookfinder, so you don't even even have to leave an arbitrage to find the cheapest copy of the book on the internet. Nobody else does that. Okay, part three. Now this is where we're going to spend the most amount of time here, and this is really crucial. It is not enough just to know, okay, there's a site called Bookfinder, and I can just use that to scan every other site. That is absolutely not enough. You will be that you will be on a road to ruin if you don't pay attention to what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. Okay, because there are some key details that you must know. I want you to write these down, how to not get totally ripped off on Bookfinder because yes, it does happen. The hype, is, the negative hype is somewhat real, but it's not gonna affect you by the time we get to the end of this video, okay? So here's the great lie. We already covered this, right? The lie that you hear all the time on Facebook groups and stuff. Never buy on any site other than Amazon. And people say this because Amazon polices itself really, really effectively. They get rid of sellers, shady sellers, really fast. But um, guess who doesn't? The, all these other sites. They don't really police themselves that much. So we have to do the policing for them. The good news is it's really easy to do. Okay, so here's the book finder problem. There are many, many what are called international editions being sold as the domestic edition. I don't have enough time. It's not even, it doesn't even matter what an international edition is. Just know you should not purchase an international edition of a book, okay? Um, number two, there's lots of counterfeits. It, the, the problem is not nearly as big as people make it out to be, but it is a concern. And there are many, this is the biggest one of all, there are many mislisted books. People list a book on the page for one ISBN, you know, meaning one edition, and it's actually a previous edition. And because these other sites don't police themselves as much, this ends up being a big problem. But the good news is, it's really easy to spot the mislisted books if you follow what I'm gonna teach you here. Okay, so when buying from Amazon, this is the great thing about Amazon. This is why most people just say only source from Amazon. It's because when you're sourcing on Amazon, you don't have to think. You can just shut your brain off knowing that Amazon has done most of the work to weed out the shady sellers, right? 
With other sites, we have to actually burn some calories to avoid the pitfalls. It requires labor on our part. Not digging ditches labor. I just mean the kind of labor we have to use, you know, a few uh, brain cells for like about three seconds. Okay, that's all I'm talking about. So if you made it no further in this video, I command you to stay to the end. But if somehow you broke my command and you did not make it any further, here's the golden rule of BookFinder. If you see anything that looks weird, the cover image is different, the ISBN is different, there's some weird text you don't understand, anything that looks different, just move on. Just assume it's, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's a pitfall, assume it's a, a mislisted book or any one of those things I just mentioned and just move on. Now that's not always true, but if you had to have like a mental shortcut, this is more true than it is not true, okay? But we're gonna get more nuanced here. Now here's the checklist, I'm gonna go into each of these in more detail here in a second, of all the things that can go wrong that you must look out for when you're sourcing through BookFinder. Are you ready? Number one, check the ISBN. Make sure the ISBN always matches. Number two, make sure the format matches. Number three, make sure that the book was not printed in any Asian country. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. Make sure it doesn't ship from any Asian country. Check the cover image, make sure it matches the cover image on the BookFinder page. Check the edition, make sure the edition matches. Check for any reference to international editions those are it's a major pitfall and then check and make sure the condition matches what's being described make sure it's actually a sellable book so I'm gonna go through each of these in a little more detail now okay so number one check the ISBN now when you look at the book finder results you see a screenshot right here notice that top row where it has the ISBN that is not what I'm talking about that ISBN is always gonna match the book the, the, on, on Amazon, right? What I'm talking about is shady sellers that will list a book on one product page under one ISBN when the, the ISBN is actually, for the book they're selling, is actually for another edition. That's the pitfall you have to avoid, okay? So a lot of shady sellers will do that. You'll see this happen a lot on eBay, a lot on third-party sites. So when you actually dig in, click over to the third-party site and dig into the description and look at the page and do your due diligence, Always make sure the ISBN that's on the actual page, actual listing on the third party site, matches the product page that you're gonna list the book for sale on on Amazon and matches BookFinder. Um, both of those will be the same. Okay, check the format. If the ISBN is for a hard cover, for example, make sure the description doesn't say it's for a soft cover. So again, just because, because these other sites don't police themselves as well, you have a lot of shady sellers that will list the book as one can, in one format when it's actually another format trying to get a little more for a book. So like a lot of times they'll just pick the, uh, you know, the ISBN that has the, the best, the highest demand, even if it's just similar to the book, like a different edition or something, different format, whatever. And they'll, they'll, uh, they'll list it on the, on the wrong product page. So you have to make sure that when you dig in, look at the condition description, look at, you know, whatever the page is on the third party site, make sure the format matches. Now you guys, don't shoot the messenger here, but you must avoid any book that has any mention of being printed in Asia. Again, I don't make the rules. This is just a major, major issue. Is that you buy a book and you don't realize it said printed in Asia or you didn't even know, think that mattered. That usually means it's a counterfeit or international edition, okay? Avoid, avoid, avoid. Number two, check for any mention of the book being shipped from Asia. That usually means the exact same thing, a counterfeit or an international edition. Check the cover image, not the one on BookFinder, because that's always gonna match Amazon. I'm talking about the one on the site where you're purchasing. Almost everything I'm talking about here is referring to when you click over to the third-party site and actually look at the page where you're purchasing the book. Make sure the cover image is identical. It's not unheard of, it's not exactly unheard of for books with the same ISBN to have different cover images, but it's very, very rare. So. Rule of thumb, if the product, if the cover image is different, avoid it, okay? Check the edition. This is probably the most common one. Shady sellers very, very often, especially on eBay, try to sneak into the fine print. They're actually selling an, an older edition of a book. So in other words, you, you're on the book and book, you, you, you do a search in book finder and it's like, you're looking for like the 12th edition of biology, some biology textbook. And then you read the fine print when you click over and it's actually the 11th edition, right? Always avoid that. Make sure and look for that. I mean, I mean, pour over every word. Make sure that the edition you're buying is the edition that you think you're buying. Okay, and that, that's true. Even if the ISBNs match, even though theoretically the ISBN should only denote a specific edition. Again, shady sellers try to get around that and are dece uh, deceptive in their listings. Look for international editions. I, I don't have enough time to go into like what that even is. Just know, always avoid them. Okay, and, and not just when it says international edition, but any code words 
that point at international editions. So those code words might be the word international, the word global, there's a couple others. And um, just always look out for any reference to a book being printed um, or, or published, printed in another country, particularly an Asian country, or sold to, um, or there was uh, printed specifically for another country, okay? Now, here's the blacklist, are you ready? These are the sites you should never buy from. And I am going to take some hostages here. I'm going to be an assassin. You ready? Ecampus. Ecampus, I hope you're watching this video. I have nothing but seething contempt for you. You've cost me and my members a ton of money. You um, do not police your platform, and you seem to allow egregious fraud to happen on your platform. So I have no hesitation about telling Every bookseller out there, screaming from the mountaintops, never, ever buy from eCampus. And the same goes true for Recycle a Textbook. You guys have burnt, you guys have, have I, I've, I've, I've been victimized and forgiven you 10 times and I'm not gonna do it anymore. You guys should not be patronized by any bookseller for any reason, period. Avoid, avoid, avoid. I think this is a screenshot from uh, eCampus. Avoid, oh, they're bad, okay. Part four, how to not get ripped off on eBay. Oh, by the way, I left that one thing really quick. Um, instructor's editions, avoid those. Anything that's instructor's or teacher's edition, avoid those as well. I should have included a slide for that. Okay, how to not get ripped off on eBay. So I would say a majority of the time that a site is, the book is um, the cheapest on a non-Amazon site, that site is going to be eBay. So I wanna give a little extra attention here on how to navigate eBay because there are some, some peculiarities when it comes to eBay. So I'm just gonna walk you through exactly how to navigate. So when you click over from BookFinder, how do you navigate eBay? I'm gonna give you the five-step checklist, okay? So I'm gonna start at the top of the page, the eBay page, and work our way down to the bottom. Right at the top, this is what you see right when you click over. I want you to pay attention to the shipping section, the delivery estimate, look at the seller's rating, just look for anything that looks like it's a red flag. Does the does delivery estimate say it's like two months out? Does shipping say it's shipping from Asia? Does the, does the seller have like bad feedback? Like whatever, just like really just take a glance. You'll be able to learn how to do this in a split second and um, just make sure that nothing stands out as a red flag. Okay, number two, can you see the actual image of the specific copy of the book that you're buying, not a stock image. Now, I wanna be clear, stock images are fine. I'm not saying avoid books that have a stock image. It just means you need to be a little more careful with steps one, three, four, and five that we're gonna cover here, okay? But if the book, ha actually, you actually seen a non-stock image, the actual book you're getting, that's fantastic because it means you actually have confidence that you know exactly what you're gonna get, right? So the, in this particular instance, this is definitely not a stock image. This is definitely, you know, it's not coming from a publisher. You can see it's the actual copy, it's banged up, but totally sellable, that's a great sign, okay? Now I'm gonna scroll down a little more to item specifics. All you're doing here is you're going through that eight part checklist, those red, red flag checklist I gave you a second ago, and making sure none of, those, none of those red flags pop up in the item specifics. Make sure the ISBN matches, make sure the, it's not an international edition, all the stuff I covered, right? Um, this is just very, very important. So just, again, you'll learn, to, you think you need to take out a whiteboard and make a big production out of this, you really don't. You'll learn how to do this very, very quickly, okay? Um, and I mean like in under 10 seconds. Okay, so next we're gonna scroll down a little bit more to the about this product section. Again, you're looking for any red flags from that eight part checklist. And the very last one, and most people miss this, when you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's this little part down here where the font's really small where the seller can actually enter their own text. Just anything random they wanna add. A lot of times, even when there's no red flags in step one through four, they emerge here, okay? So you really wanna pay attention here. In other words, everything else might look good and then it may bury at the bottom. Oh, by the way, this is the eighth edition, not the 12th edition, right? This is where the devil and the details often emerge. So you wanna pay particularly close attention to what's going on all the way at the bottom down here. And that is it, you guys. That is the whole process for finding the cheapest copy anywhere on the internet. Now I must let you know about Zen Arbitrage. This is the world's first online book sourcing tool and the biggest and best out there because we've had a bunch of imitators and they're all terrible, if I do say so myself. We offer you a complete business in a box, actually multiple businesses. Uh, we have multiple different revenue streams within the Zen Arbitrage framework. And let me tell you guys something right now. There's a link below this video, okay, right now. You can sign up for the free trial literally right now 
You can literally pillage our database. You can buy everything. You can go totally bonkers crazy. You can test out our BookFinder feature that allows you to scan over 40 sites through BookFinder with no clicking required. You can prove it's as good as I say it is. You can make money. You can literally prove the concept and pay nothing at all. Because when I say free trial, free means free. You get 100% unrestrained access to Zen Arbitrage during your free trial. Our commitment to you is to provide a partially automated, low risk business that you can run from a computer from anywhere in the world. And that is what Zen Arbitrage delivers. So with Zen Arbitrage, we offer you the tools, we offer you the training, and we offer you the community in one all inclusive package. No weird upsells, what you see is what you get, okay? So, if you hit the link below right now, sign up for your free trial, you get complete access to Zen Arbitrage, again, the world's first, biggest, and best online book sourcing tool. You get complete access to our training program, which is so extensive, some people sign up just to get access to our videos. Complete access to my cell phone, I literally, it's true, I literally will email you when you sign up for the free trial, I will email you my cell number, my not an assistance number, my actual cell number, you can send me a text message anytime you want, day or night. Full prep service setup, and what this means is the prep service partner that we partner with, that we will set you up with, it's optional, but if you choose to work with them, this allows you to run a business from anywhere in the world without ever seeing or touching a book. Yes, they will handle all shipping for you. It is a complete business system, as I said, a business in a box without the box. You can get started in seconds. It's 100% web-based, so there's nothing to download, no Amazon experience required, all training is included. We offer you the freedom to run this business from anywhere in the world. It's totally web-based when you set up with our prep service partner. And total simplicity, everything is in one super simple dashboard. So what I want you to do, because I know this is at least raised an eyebrow for you, I want you to hit the link below this video, start your free trial. Confirm this is as good as I say it is. Free means free, you get it for 14 days, and we're happy to actually extend the trial for you if you want. So hit the link below this video, start your free trial, and I will see you guys over there.